Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series, The Tech Deep End. Today what we're going to be doing is going over the Hyper Neo Geo 64 motherboard in depth because it's not really talked about or well catalogued. And when I did the Hyper Neo Geo intro, I basically said that no one really knows what the GPU is, but through some research we've kind of figured out what's going on here. But taking a look at the top of the motherboard, we have a lot of different large ASICs as well as that FPGA chip. We have about 11 different chips on the top, all marked ASIC, and it is just a crazy system in general, just how many chips there are on this. The NEC VR 4300 being the processor is one of the smallest chips, which is really interesting, and that's going to be right up here, and that is the same CPU that was used in the Nintendo 64. And to the right of that, you're going to see the Neo 64 SYS chip, and I'm assuming that has something to do with the system itself, and SCC, I'm really not sure what that is. I'm still kind of thinking about it, but I haven't figured it out yet. Up here, we just have a digital signal processor, and that's leading into those card connectors, and it also goes for the SCC and the system chip, so I'm assuming the SCC has something to do with the operation itself. But down here we have this FPGA and it's going out to the network connectors and this end of the entire board is going to be the network communication I.O. because the driving games could be networked from more than one cabinet. And taking a look at the bottom where those vias go through, if you just trace a path right to the side of the board you get to that FPGA chip and all the other associated chips with it. You have a little burned ROM there with some data on it. And then basically if you actually take a look at the communication board itself, and that's the I.O. chip right there, you will see that on that board there are no actual chips. It's just a few different connectors, a dip switch, a machine number set, so you basically can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. But even on the back of that PCB, there is nothing chip-wise on there, so all the communication is going to be happening on the motherboard, and then these harnesses just basically wire the machine up so they can transmit data from one to the other, one being the master system and the other being the slave systems. But back on the top of the board here, those are those chips we just talked about, the CPU and those system chips, but down below we're going to have a lot of different chips that are going to be for the 2D portion. And SNK separated this out for 2D and for 3D, so once we get past those system chips right there, we're going to have a sprite ASIC, and that's going to handle all the sprites for the system itself. And down below that we're going to have the BGC, or background chip, which will handle the 2D background elements. We have the REN, which I believe is the render chip, which will take the information from all three of those chips to combine a 2D output. And then we have a GTE, which I'm assuming is the transform engine because the hyper could rotate, scale, and otherwise manipulate their sprites. And then we're going to have the RAM for the 2D portion, and SMK isolated the RAM out so the 2D chips have their own RAM and the 3D chips are going to have their own RAM. But it's a massive amount of chips, and I can't believe SNK decided to make it this way because this could not have been a cheap board at all to manufacture. Because we have so many big ASICs on the board, it must have cost a fortune. Now if we just take a look at the cart connectors, you're going to see where those paths trace out to, and you're going to see that some of the pins are going to be for the 2D elements on the cart, and then when we go below, some of those paths are going to be for the 3D elements, because the chips on the games themselves, there's so much storage for 2D elements, and there's so much storage for 3D elements, so those traces are going to go to the individual chips that would handle either 2D or 3D, or the game code itself on those system chips. And what we can do is we can actually take a close-up look at some of these chips, just to talk about them a little bit more. So that is the GTE, or the Transformation Engine, what I believe at least, and then underneath that we have the Rendering Chip, and if we go over to the right you're going to see the Neo 64 BGC, the Background Chip, and then up above that you're going to have the Sprite Chip, and you'll see closer up that RAM chip right there, and then we have the NEC VR4300, the System Chip, and the SCC, which I really do not know what that is. If I had to take a guess, it might combine the 2D and 3D elements together, but I'm not sure. And right here, we just have that dual port RAM chip. The dual port RAM on the Hyper can be changed depending on the game, and that's why the games are interchangeable. The dual port RAM can be reprogrammed by the game to change the I.O. structure. But taking a look at the bottom here, this is where we're going to have a lot of the 3D chips. And you're going to see we have one, two, three, four, five large ASICs on there, as well as all the RAM for the 3D portion. And the Hyper Neo Geo did have different RAM amounts, depending on if you're dealing with 2D or 3D, but you'll see them in there, and they are on different chips. But basically, I always thought that the Hyper Neo Geo 64 ran off a single chip GPU like you would expect, but in reality we have the Hyper 64 CVR, we have the Triangle Engine, we have another render chip, and we have the Cal, what I assume is the Polygon Calculation Engine, that does the math, the render chip combines all these chips into a 3D output. The triangle engine obviously sets up the triangles, and the CVR, I really do not know what that does. I could take some guesses, but honestly, I'm a filmmaker and a film professor. I am not a hardware engineer or an electrical engineer, so what I'm doing is basically some best guessing based on what I know. 
And if we take a look up here, that's the NEC V53A audio I.O. chip, and it's running at 16 megahertz, and that's going to handle a lot of the audio I.O. And that is basically an enhanced version of the NEC V30 and V33, and that was really good at handling all the audio, everything like that. You can read this if you want. I was kind of showing what that was working at, but that's going to be some of the audio portion of the board up near the 3D areas as well. But like I said, it's a really strange system. I don't understand why SNK decided to make it this complicated. Here you have the I.O. board with that BIOS chip, and the I.O. board sets what the motherboard does. There was a driving I.O. board, there was a fighting I.O. board, there was a Korean I.O. board, and there was a Beastbusters I.O. board. And they connect to the motherboard, but it really makes it complicated because that board changes everything. But taking a look at the top of the motherboard here, we have the NEC VR4300 CPU, and we have the Neo64 system chip. I do not know what the SCC chip is. I've got some guesses, but they're not good enough to say. We have the digital signal processor. We have the 2D transformation engine. We've got that sprite engine. We've got the background engine. And then that REN chip, which I highly believe takes those three chips and outputs a cohesive 2D image. We've got that Altera FPGA, as well as the dual port RAM and communication IO CPU, and that's going to be for how the games interact with the IO board on the bottom, as well as how they interact with each other on a network setting. But that makes the top of the motherboard. If we take a look at the bottom of the motherboard, we're going to see all the 3D elements as well as some of the audio. We've got the Neo64 CVR chip, no idea what that does. We've got the triangle engine. We have the NEC V53A audio IO CPU. We have the CAL, which I believe is a calculation engine for setting up those polygons. And we have another REN chip, which I believe takes all of the 3D chips and combines all the elements together to output a cohesive 3D image. And this is why emulation is so difficult on this board. A lot of these chips haven't been decapped and scanned. I may actually send this board off to somebody if I can to get that done because I have a spare that I really don't need. But that's basically what the Hyper Neo Geo 64 is. It is a complete mess of chips. It must have cost them a fortune to make who knows how much, but I'm sure it's part of the failure. Short of that, we hope you enjoyed this. Go down below and hit like and subscribe. We'll be back on Sunday with another video and back on Tuesday with another entry in the Hyper Neo Geo series. Thanks so much for watching and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.